Welcome to the Table Network Podcast. This is our first episode. We're excited to have you guys here. I'm excited to be here with you guys. Uh, most people are probably just joining in for the first time and have no idea what they're stepping into. Yeah. So let's start by kind of giving a quick introduction to ourselves and then the podcast, and then we'll dive into today's content. I love it. Yeah. Cool. You want to kick us off? <laughs> okay, fine. <laughs> My name is Zach. And uh, we'll talk a lot about personality types. So I thought the easiest way to give you guys the quick download is just to give you guys some of my, uh, I'm an Enneagram 7, Wing 7, INTP <laughs> on the Myers-Briggs, uh, DISC, DI, uh, Harry Potter House, Gryffindor, obviously, mm-hmm. um, Working Genius, WI, and uh, I'm a Labrador and Lion Mix, if you've taken that one. Yeah, I didn't know you could mix those, but that's cool. That's a pretty cool mix, right? Yeah, uh, that's sure. Pretty cool mix. Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, I'm Kinsey. I am an Enneagram Two Wing One. I'm not sure what my Myers Briggs is. <laughs> I think it's like an INFJ, whatever that means. Don't know about DISC. Um, what else? I am a Hufflepuff in the Hogwarts house. Oh, and Pu- we did Puff and Proud. Our Disney princess. I was Mulan and you were? Belle. And that was actually a lot, it was a, a journey in self-awareness. Yes, yeah, in the pre, pre-production pre of this podcast, we talked about a lot of the Disney princesses are very similar in personality, I think. Very similar. So I had to find one that that fit me, and I think Belle. Yeah. That Belle wasn't was rebellious, didn't yeah. run away from home. Yeah, innocent, innocent, sweet, kind, takes care of people. Absolutely. I think, I think most people's favorite D- Disney princess, so... Um, anyway, and then for the working genius, I am a E and a T. So, Very good. Yeah. Good. Uh, I'm Chris, and um, I'm an Enneagram 8, which means that all the other personality uh, tests are useless uh, to me. In mm-hmm. general, I don't want to be put in a box. Okay? That's just the reality of being an Enneagram 8. I don't want to be controlled. So Myers Briggs, a little too controlling. Disc, not interested. Um, I don't mind other people's opinions, mm-hmm. uh, but I just know internally that I'm I'm just not uh, just that. But you're probably Gryffindor, right? I definitely am Gryffindor. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. And you found one that you do. It's, I guess this isn't really a personality test. Working genius. Yeah, but working genius to me is more about like how to work out of your best space, like how to how to show up in your fullness at work. And so I love working genius. Um, Working genius, my competencies, or excuse me, my genius is D and G. Those are my two. Yeah. So we'll dive into that a little bit more in later episodes and people will understand why that fits you so well. (laughs) Yes. (laughs) And why WI is you. Yeah. Yeah, And a seven. It's it's all going to make sense. Yeah, for sure. Uh, And then, yeah, so we are WI, wait a minute. I already know this. W I D G E T. Whoa. <gasps> oh my Unity. gosh. Wow. Teamwork. I, I love that it's called working genius. And the three of us, the geniuses, just now <laughs> yeah. figured that out. That was like the epiphany moment. Yeah. Um, Whoa. I really didn't know that about us. That's that. cool. That's the yeah. goal. Well, and then Madison told us that you have one other identifier, which is BD. BD. I'm not familiar with that one. <laughs> you have to say it. <laughs> I can't. I can't say it with a straight face. <laughs> All right. Big dog. Big dog. Big dog. <laughs> yes. Madison and I will have a conversation later. Yeah. I was like, I don't know yeah. what test that is, but I want to take it. <laughs> um, yeah. I love it. Yeah. I love it. Well, okay. So like that revelation that we all have different working geniuses and it's best when they work together, especially as a team yeah. to accomplish something bigger than yourself. That's kind of setting up what we're talking about today. Yeah. So this podcast really is going to have two different formats. One where we get together and we get to talk. And this is a continuation of a conversation that we get to have at events that we host across our city uh, here in Austin, Texas. We would love for you to come join us sometime where we get a bunch of people together in a room, a diverse group, a lot of people from the marketplace. And we talk about the things that guide both our personal and professional lives. We know that we're the one common denominator between work and home. And if we invest in ourselves, then we're better everywhere we go. And so this year, building up towards our big annual conference, DCX, which we'll tell you guys about, we're really wrestling with this idea of unity. Yeah. And that's what we want to talk about today. 
Uh, along the way, though, we'll also have some awesome guest speakers. Uh, really exciting lineup that we'll share with you guys here soon. So yeah. let's dive into this idea of unity. Can we all, we were trying to think of things that we all universally agree upon. Mm -hmm. This is not a whole lot. Pineapple on pizza, eh. uh, Cowboys are America's team, not so much. Can we all unify around the idea that unity is important? Oh, that's a great question. Um, I would, yeah, I definitely hold unity as one of the most important uh, things to strive for, but I also don't think it's necessarily a destination. Mm -mm. So I don't know that somewhere we can land because as we continue to change, evolve, um, yeah, I just think we've got to be ready to unify to the next thing. Yeah. Um, and unity, uh, again, to me is um, kind of an all in um, mentality. And so, therefore, for me, it's like a continual investment into uh, unifying. So, yes, I think it's incredibly important, but I think it's also very elusive. Yeah. We really, when we themed out this year, it wasn't like just unity, but it was the fight for unity. Yeah. And that's an ongoing fight that we're all a part of yeah. and an ongoing journey that we're all a part of. I think a good example is you're on the path to unity. We've got you at a really, really cool time to actually talk about this. Mm -hmm. uh, you just got engaged. I did, yeah, on Christmas Day. Oh, so. Wow. Yeah. She is one of those Hallmark movies. <laughs> yeah. it that That's probably like the biggest descriptor. All those other things are very true, but you are a Hallmark did movie. Did you know it was oh, coming, the question, on Christmas Day? Not on Christmas Day. I knew the question was coming. Um, I kept probing, but... I did not know it was going to be Christmas Day, so I was very surprised. You were very surprised. She said, yeah. Mike, by the New Year or else. So. No, I didn't say that. <laughs> no, never. <laughs> Mike um, can confirm. No, she's Belle, remember? She, <laughs> she didn't see it coming. I really didn't. I was very surprised. But yeah, so I'm on the, the engagement path towards marriage. So, well, yeah. And that's what we talked about was like marriage isn't, it's not like then you're unified and everything's all figured out. But even from there, you're really just beginning that journey. It is a day by day, moment by moment journey. Yeah. So let's start by talking about what the heck unity is. I know for a lot of us, it can be kind of a foo foo word. Like, yeah, it sounds good. It's a platitude or whatever. Um, and a lot of times, I only like even in Googling the word unity, you kind of see it in the church world. But what does it mean in the marketplace or in my life? How do I practically live that out? How would you guys define unity? Man, it's such a, it's such a broad. Word like you said, like if I think about unity in the workplace, it seems like it doesn't belong. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I don't know why, but it just seems like it's too ethereal, or it's this um, high concept that it's like, how do you at work you're going to be unified? Like, how does that does that mean we have to be, you know, all the same? So yeah, mm -hmm. I, I think it's a it's a complex uh, conversation um, and a hard thing to define. Yeah. yeah. It's like you, you can't reduce it down to one of those team posters on the wall, <laughs> you know, like a flying eagle through the sunset. But you hit on a piece of it already. Like unity is not uniformity, right? right? Like it's not just compliance. It's no. not like just all agreeing. No. Which I, my personality hates disagreement. And so I would like it to be agreement. But yeah. then I think that means we're all the same, too. If we all always agree, yeah. what good is that going to do? So it, it definitely requires some level of disagreement for sure. Well, and I think that's a, a big part of unity is honesty. So if we're really honest, we know we don't agree, but sometimes we will agree just to avoid the mm. conversation. Mm -hmm. And so then we walk away, you know, unified, but not really. And we have an out in our mind. Um, I can basically distance myself from your idea um, because it wasn't mine. Yeah, the the concept of shared fate. Yeah, you need that, and if you don't have that, then you can play the blame game. Yep. Um, and so, I think maybe even defining some of unity as shared fate. Yeah. You're. That's right. You're gonna have the same outcome together. Yep. No matter what it is. Yeah, I I loved pre-show you were talking about disagreement is the path to unity. Yeah. And uh, it's hard but true. Yep. And uh, being willing to disagree and lay yourself down so that you can be unified as a team to move towards purpose together mm -hmm. is really, really important. I think that idea even hits on that unity isn't inherently bad or good, right? right. Mm -hmm. But you're unifying towards a purpose. Um, the purpose is either bad or good. <laughs> yes. And so yeah, how do we unify around the right things? Yeah. 
every major movement, good or bad, was people coming together That's right. to move towards something. There was something appealing. Mm-hmm. Um, there was a destination that maybe was described in a way that drew people to where they wanted to go. Um, and then, again, just the wisdom to understand, well, you know, how does that line up with who I am, uh, my beliefs, uh, my character? Like, is it something, if I take that um, idea of a destination and kind of dive into maybe the uh, the outflow of that, do I want to be affiliated or associated with being unified? I mean, you've brought up before um, <laughs> Jesus and Hitler. Yeah. Uh, they say they're the same Myers-Briggs type. Yes. Right. Like, so and you wonder why I have a problem with Myers Briggs, but <laughs> <Right>. um, <laughs> you know, share, they both are really good at unifying. Yeah. Um, one obviously very good. The other one horrible. So, right. Yeah, I think there's got to be you know uh, some room for disagreement in order to continue to evaluate and assess where you're going, and is the destination really where we want to go? Yeah. And I, that's what disagreement does. I think of my wife and I. We raised four kids and throughout that process we were not unified um a lot of the time unfortunately and so what we what what we didn't do is take the time to sit down outside of the crisis and like come up with a game plan but we were completely unified on where we what we wanted at the end of raising them Mm -hmm. you know we wanted you know, adults that were contributing to communities in positive ways, right? Um, that weren't living at home. None of mine do, thankfully. Um, and that were able to contribute at work, uh, have a family. Um, so to me, it's like we had to keep reminding ourselves of this destination. And then when we're arguing about uh, or disagreeing um, about how to do it, we, we should have been more open-handed with it. Um, and what I mean by open-handed is like, I, I want to not only hear your argument for why we should, you know, discipline them in a specific way, but in my mind, instead of formulating my counter argument, I want to build a case for yours. Mm. Mm. And then psychologically, then if we then agree to, uh, disagree and, but we're going to go with your plan. Now I have some psychological ownership and some shared fate. Yeah. Well, and now I'm starting to hear how this fits into the workplace, right? Like how your teams are stronger and your businesses are better if everybody feels unified, like with trust underlay. That's right. And can fight for the best idea. It feels like they can add and move us towards that shared purpose. Exactly. Well, and I think it shows that there's layers to being unified. There is obviously you need to be unified on the ultimate destination of where you're going, that purpose. But along the way, how you get there, there's going to be a lot of disagreement. And so willing to fight um, in a in a productive way to get unified to, okay, in this specific situation or issue, what are we going to do? Even though we are unified at the end goal, there's going to be moments along the way where, yeah, disagreement will come up and we need to push through those um, to be unified in that specific moment as well. And so it uh, even goes back to the the theme for the year being the fight for unity and that it is ongoing because you can get to unity and then there's going to be another thing and another thing right. and another thing. Um, mm-hmm. And so it's, it's worth work doing, but you got to know that it's going to be continual for sure. Yeah. I need you to disagree with me mm-hmm. because it's going to make me better and the organization better. And so based yeah. on our workplace experience, we're going to be like really, really good, you know? <laughs> yeah. I, well, and I, well, I think too, like the point of, um, that you made earlier about like, you don't like disagreement. You mm-hmm. don't want to, I don't know that there can be, um, a more off kilter, uh, power balance, uh, than you and I, mm-hmm. I mean, to, yeah. yeah. Um, and the eight being in an ownership or authority position. Yeah. You are my boss. And then I'm, you know, twice your age, Mm -hmm. a male. Mm -hmm. I I don't know that there could be a uh, a more, uh, again, you know, power shift than for me to invite you in authentically and genuinely to uh, to disagree with me. Yeah. Um, And then what I do in my mind is I think about how passionate you are uh, about our destination and uh, consciously, subconsciously, I question how much you're committed to it 
when you don't disagree with me. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that's been something I've had to learn working with you is you want me to disagree. Yes. Um, But I've always, at least in my mind, I don't know if you've even been told this, but the narrative I was telling myself is if you disagree, you're not showing that you're being responsible and respect the person who's telling you where we're going. And so I've had to shift the narrative in my head that, no, it's okay for me to have an opinion or to be so bought in that I do disagree because I care. Um, And then that's okay too. Um, But I think it points to the beginning of the episode when you were talking about humility. It requires humility on your end to invite me in to kind of allow me to not feel intimidated. But then it requires humility on my end to, in an opposite way, actually step into the conversation um, and voice that. So... But yeah, yeah, interesting balance here. (laughs) It's an interesting, yeah, because um, then I have to prove out that I want that disagreement um, on a daily moment by moment basis um, by, um, again, continue to practice humility that when I do hear disagreement, I don't just ramp myself up for this challenge, Mm -hmm. which I love um, because I do want the best idea. But if pride takes over, then with my personality type, it tends to shut down the conversation. Oh, it's like absolutely. Somebody's like yeah. this. I'm like, no. And for these reasons. And it comes across as so authoritative, so passionate. I've had to learn, okay, well, how am I going to be able to show up in a way that invites and continues to invite mm-hmm. you into that conversation so that you don't just be like, well, he says he wants me to disagree, but every time I do, he just shuts it down. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's con- it's yeah. continual. Yeah. Yeah. And and I see you guys making each other better because based on the Enneagram, when you make room for her or for others, you actually tap into the two-ness, the generosity side, the giving back side. And so there is a good balance there if both are willing to lay down self for the sake of others. So, I mean, like, now we go light candles, we kumbaya, we (laughs) enjoy the, like, do we all always have to agree? No. No. And and again, I'll say like that true unity is forged out of the fires of disagreement. I mean, there's no other way. If if you and I disagree on something, but we don't voice the very essence of the disagreement, like the root of it, then it's always like this partial. And for me, unity is going to be this all in mentality. Mm -hmm. I'm just a passionate person. So everything that I think or feel, I'm going to express it um, in its fullness. And there's an expectation that everyone does that back. But unfortunately, if in my expression, I don't give room for others, then then unfortunately, uh, I'm just shutting it down um, prematurely prior to getting to the very essence of why you disagree. Mm-hmm. It's like being an, an investigator like to try to figure out in your mind, like what is it that you're really suggesting we do Um, as opposed to kind of on the surface saying, well, I think this is what Zach's wanting. It's, it's again, asking questions instead of answering questions. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So how do you figure out or sort through like when to pursue unity, when to have clear boundaries, when it's a disagreement and when it's just, a relationship you shouldn't pursue. That's a tough one. <laughs> that is gross. Yeah. <laughs> um, I think there are times when you, I think it's like knowing yourself and knowing, yeah, what ultimately matters to you and knowing, I think trust is a huge piece. Do you trust the people that you're trying to unify with enough to, voice some of those things that you disagree with if if you're never willing to vocalize those disagreements or the things that you don't you're not on the same page about then you can't you can't let them um there's just never going to be unity and so you can't just always place it on them and so I think it's taking responsibility for have I done everything I can Mm do um, to pursue unity with that person or that organization and if not then I can't sit around and complain about not being unified but um, if you've taken the steps and you know you're you've been vocal about 
you know, these are the things that I disagree with. Here's what I'm thinking. And you're met with some hostility or reject. Well, then, yeah, maybe those aren't the people you should unify with. But Mm -hmm. I think giving people the opportunity to um, speak into that, um, but being brave enough to do it, too. So Mm -hmm. I don't know if that fully answers your question. No, nailed it. Um, (laughs) No, and I think it's a part of the journey, right? Like, I think some of it is weighing it out. Like, we all bring in our own unique worldviews that yeah. make us us and we'll break down in a future episode some of the factors that shape that worldview uh some of which are just preferences like some of the things yeah. we don't have to agree you're a patriots fan that's right i try and be a cowboys fan neither of you guys like pineapple on your pizza i'm okay with it but that doesn't affect our day-to-day there are bigger things at play that we can agree to for the sake of relationship and actually the things that we disagree on in that sense add to the variety and like That's the right. dynamic of the if relationship there were no cowboys fans uh there'd be no one to rub it in uh when the patriots won yeah or or laugh at when the cowboys lose yeah there's real benefit <laughs> i'm glad we can make you feel better <laughs> um and uh but i i like what you're talking about too because it puts the responsibility on the individual to at least try to pursue unity that doesn't mean forever in every mm-hmm. circumstance, right. uh, but to try and pursue unity, uh, at least at least begin on that journey. Yeah, I think that if you go back down to the root of what your question is, it's like, at what point do you feel like uh, being completely and utterly honest with someone won't avail anything? Nothing can come of it. Like I've, there have been people I've been in conversation with before, and they've asked me questions. I've answered their questions. I've been brutally honest and then they keep coming back to me and asking me the question in a different way. And I think what they're hoping for is a different, a different response or different answer. Well, to me, we're just not going to be able to unify on necessarily what they're hoping um, I'm going to contribute. So whether it's like uh, their own self development, they're asking me questions about um, maybe trying to become more self aware and I'm telling them maybe how they're coming across but they're just not wanting to hear that. So the agree to disagree would move into, I, I just can't unify around. And it's so an Enneagram 8 is perfect uh, example of that. I just live in a lot of denial. And so the perspective I have about how people see me, both positively and negatively, I, I just tend to live in denial ar- about the reality uh, for other people. Mm-hmm. So there's a reality that you guys have to live with every day when you show up to work when I walk into a room. Well, I could try and force you in my own mind to unify with me about what it's like when I walk into a room. But it's so self-serving to think about it from that perspective. And so now your honesty with me, it's like, no, man, when you you, when you walk into a room, uh, and I've heard you guys use phrases like "larger than life," that you you can take tend to take up a lot of space um, emotionally, not necessarily physically. <laughs> Let me sit up straighter. Um, it's a good check in right now. It's a good check in. Anybody watching the video podcast? Yeah. Um, so the honesty component of unity is so critical because the moment you stop telling me the reality, um, we're not living in, in true unity. Uh, But if I know, man, I can tend to, you know, take up a room emotionally or, you know, behaviorally, well then, but if I don't want to do that, if if we've unified on, well, that's not really what what you want to do because it doesn't give anybody else space. Well, if I really want to get there, I have to understand what I'm doing and how that impacts other people. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I have to understand that. Well, and I think yes the honesty but also the trust that yeah. over relationship if you know if someone were to come up to me and just be brutally honest i'd probably just go cry but <laughs> i need the people that i trust to be brutally honest because then i know that it's coming because you care about me um and i think that's where a lot of probably more in like the business world than most is you're going to have to pursue relationship and get your people to trust you and you need to trust them so that you can have honest conversations so that you can experience true unity. Um, you can't just go into the, you know, start day one and expect to be unified yeah. with your team. You need to invest in those relationships to build trust, to then build the ability to be honest, to then get 
to a semblance of unity because we're never going to fully arrive. And so, yeah, it's it's, I, it's a lot of layers. Yeah, if you're a business guy and you're leading teams or an organization and listening to this right now, and you haven't already turned this off, like, but you're like a hard business guy, well, then props. I mean, there's a strong business case for doing this. Yeah. How much of employee time is wasted right now? They're occup- uh, like 20 to 30% engagement. That's right. So the most of the time, what are they doing? Uh, they're just looking for a way out, thinking about something yeah. else, not plugged in. What if you could tap into that other 70%? and really get the most out of your employees? What if you could know that everything that they're doing is moving towards the organizational purpose? Mm -hmm. How much better is that? What if you didn't have to like worry about hiring, retaining employees or employee turnover? Like there's a a, a huge business sense to this also. Absolutely, and you start to realize that it transcends really every area of life. But I think about like the three of us, couldn't be three more different people on the planet. Um, the way we think, uh, the way we feel, um, very different. Um, (laughs) and yet, uh, when we are, uh, completely aligned and unified on where we're going, completely unstoppable, Mm -hmm. we we will accomplish, uh, just great things. And I love that it comes right through the fact that we get to honor and, you know, even though sometimes we might tease Kenzie, um, we, we know we need her. Mm-hmm. And, you know, each one of us brings something very different uh, mm-hmm. to the table, uh, personality wise, emotionally, um, in a way that if we can learn to celebrate it, that's when you're going to get to unity. Totally. Yeah. Well, because I care about our purpose and what we get to do more than anything, but I don't want to do it alone. Yeah. So just because I care about that doesn't mean I can't accomplish it. Yep. And so, yeah, I'm going to need people to help me. And I want people who are different than me, although sometimes I might not act like it. <laughs> um, it is helpful to have two people who are incredibly different than me yeah. on the journey to get to where I want to go. Yeah. So Santa just came to our house, right? And I'm Santa, by the way. Whoa. Um, and I gifted Mind myself. Time. Should we warn uh, parents? Master class. Right? Is that the, oh, yeah, yeah. the online courses? Yeah. And the first one that I watched was Coach Krasinowski. Coach Just K. Coach K. Just, just Coach, Coach K. Krzyzewski. Um, so I was watching his course on leadership. And one of the things that he talks about is the power of unity. And so as an example, you all need to go watch the video podcast now. Kenzie, if you would hold up your hand. And I just need you to hit Chris with one finger. Okay, maybe, maybe not. But like the power is when... <laughs> All of the individual fingers come together as a fist that you're really actually oh. able to, to punch somebody. do some damage. Again, force for good, force for bad. That's up to you. We'll figure that out at a later date. But it's the coming together. It's the yes. unifying. And so whether that's in our personal lives, in our business lives, what's another example of unity that you guys have seen uh, or disunity? Well, uh, the one that always uh, jumps out at me is uh, kind of the idea of an orchestra. Um, harmony. Um, you're putting pieces together that uh, there's no relationship um, outside of the orchestra. You have woodwinds, you have string instruments, you have percussion. On their own, they can sometimes just take up a lot of noise and space, but you put them all together, it's this beautiful thing that really you'd be missing out on uh, the beauty of that if any one of those weren't there. So to me, I just love the idea that they have to come and play their part. We all have different parts around unity. Like I said, I don't want you to have to be different just to unify with me. I don't want mm-hmm. you to be different. Like I need, um, I need for you uh, to be you, fully you. And therefore, I have to create, again, that trust that says it's okay to be fully you. Mm-hmm. Uh, because, again, it's just not going to sound good um, when you decide, well, there's an entire – you know, group of instruments that don't belong in our orchestra. It's going to sound better altogether, fuller, and we're going to accomplish what we want to. So to me, that's a great example of of unity. Yeah, it's powerful. Mm -hmm. Harmony. Uh, And for anybody listening, I'm trying to find like a pitch perfect acapella band for DCX. So stay tuned. We'll see what happens. You've already talked to Kenzie? Uh, Kenzie and I actually have been practicing. We're going to start on our own. Oh, good. So There is no way. Not unified. Not unified. Way to disagree. Not currently. Way to disagree. Yeah, I think I need to confess that Zach is probably the person that I disagree with the most. 
Didn't have um, to confess so that. I'm Everybody sorry. knew that. <laughs> I'm sorry. But in that, you're probably one of the people I trust the most. So sorry That's about true. that. And that goes hand in hand, doesn't yeah, it? Yeah, it does. It's weird. And I'm sorry for that. I need it's, to work on that. Okay. Um, I need to confess to you guys that I really enjoy watching the two of you disagree. Yeah. Here to entertain. Yeah. <laughs> it's very entertaining. Okay. So in light of disagreement, where does compromise come into the conversation? Where can you, should you, are you allowed to compromise in this fight for unity? Yes. Compromise mm-hmm. is critical um, because it, unless you're, unless uh, any one of us is perfect or we um, uh, are, you know, able to see into the future other uh, than yeah. your own self-perception, which we'll talk to you about later, <laughs> um, then you, we have to just come to the realization that we just don't know um, enough to be able to be that dogmatic that we can't compromise. Now, I'm not saying you compromise on beliefs. But very rarely in life do we have to compromise beliefs in order to unify other than uh, unifying on that belief. Mm -hmm. So it's rare that this world asks us to like compromise in our daily lives, in our daily lives, like to just compromise our belief system uh, to be able to go to work. Mm -hmm. I mean, we can't unify around a company who's asking you to be unethical. So there are yeah. there are things that we all won't mm-hmm. you know compromise on, but but that's so minor compared to the vast majority of things that we can unify yeah. around. And even with that unethical corporation, like, are you going to change that corporation? Probably not. No, you got a responsibility to try, but you might just need to find another place. Just go alignment. work somewhere else. Yeah. yeah, and eventually everybody will agree to that. That's There's right. Competitive advantage to this that's unifying right. thing to doing the right thing. Yep. Mm-hmm. And uh, they'll shut down. Yeah, no, I mean, I think it's all about self-awareness and selflessness, right? Yeah. That's what this journey is. Uh, it's vulnerable and it leads to relationship. And we're able to get a lot more done together. Mm-hmm. So, Well, and I think to kind of tie it all up in a bow, at the beginning you asked, you know, how is is unity important? We all say, yes, it does. It's, it matters. But I think through the conversation realizing like, okay, but how much does it matter? Because mm-hmm. it does require a lot of trust and sacrifice and compromise. And so um, figuring out how far are you willing to go in order to unify with a person or an organization or whatever that might look like. And that's a little bit trickier. Um, Luckily, we've got a whole year to explore this and keep pressing into it. Um, And we're excited to explore this with you guys. And so we would love for this first episode, of course, if you would like, comment, subscribe. Is that what the kids do? Yes. Rate, all rate, of those. Oh, review. Even generationally, we're all different too. Are That's you an right. Xer? I am. Gen a millennial. I, you might not be a Zer, but like I'm like right on the cusp of millennial. Okay. Let's just and call Z. you a Z, though. Yeah. Oh. Really? Well. You don't like it? I love Zs. Wait, yeah. What's your beef with Gen Zers? I don't have beef. Okay. <laughs> we'll explore that in a future episode. I guess. Y- there's problems with all. We're gonna dive in so, uh, maybe next <laughs> no. on why you. Yeah, never mind. No. Yeah. And well, so, yeah. like, comment, subscribe, <laughs> do all the things. Share this with a friend or a family uh, that you would like to unify with, and go ahead and share in the comments an example of unity that you've seen that was really impactful, yeah. or a, it could be a moment, it could be an organization. We would love to hear from you, and uh, we'll continue to unpack this in the next episode. Oh,